Now, the first thing that we need to know about the star in order to find out more about how much energy it produces, what is its mass, and so on, uh, we need to know what is its, dis its distance from us. And for nearby stars, uh, we use stellar parallax to measure their distance from us. Right? Uh, we discussed before the stellar parallax that was the lack of it, or inability to uh, detect it by the naked eye, was often used throughout the history as an argument against the heliocentric or uh, sun-centered model. But eventually, people were able to measure it for the first time in 1838. So what it is, is that, say, Earth in June, or July, doesn't matter. And here is the Earth six months later. If you observe a star against the background of more distant stars, it looks as if the star has moved uh, relative to the background stars. If in July, it looks to be closer to this one here on the right. In January, it appears uh, to be closer to the one on the left. So this is what we call parallax. And this angle here, P, is known as parallax angle. So if we, one can measure it, and one knows our distance from the sun, one astronomical unit, then, and that this angle here is right angle triangle, that's the key, then uh, one can use geometry to determine the distance d to the star. And basically, uh, it's a definition of the sine function that the ratio of the side of right angle triangle opposite to that angle over hypotenuse, so one astronomical unit over the distance to the star, is basically equal to the sine of this parallax angle. That's the definition of the sine. By sine of an angle in a triangle where that angle appears, it is right angle triangle. It's the ratio of the side opposite to the angle over the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. And it turns out that for small angles, and the stars are so, uh, so far away that the parallax angle is very small. So for small angles, uh, that sine of the angle is approximately equal to angle but expressed in radians. So approximately, when p is small, this is equal to the angle, but angle expressed not in degrees but in so-called radians. So if you have a p in degrees, then you have to divide by 360 and multiply with 2 pi. So by measuring the parallax angle in, say, degrees, then in knowing, of course, our distance from the sun, one astronomical unit, uh, we can deduce the distance from, from the star. But I can uh, say that, OK, uh, I can rewrite this as saying I can solve this for distance. So the distance is. I will have 1 over the parallax angle, right? Uh, and then here I would have, uh, on this side, I would be left with one astronomical unit. And then I would have to multiply with 360 and divide with 2 pi. And I'll put this 
uh, in bracket here. But I can always scale my units so um, so that the distance is simply one over the parallax angle. And the, the units that then I express the distance is, is so-called parsecs. And the shorthand for parsec is PC. Okay? And here, the parallax angle is given in seconds of arc. So even for nearby stars, and one arc sec is equal to a degree divided by 3,600. So it's indeed a very small angle. That would be uh, an angle at which one would view, say, a quarter from a distance of uh, uh, five kilometers. And even for the nearby stars, a parallax angle is uh, <clears throat> less than one second of arc. It's about three quarters of that. So not surprising that the parallax angles could not be measured until uh, a power in, power, powerful enough telescopes were developed. Uh, for the first time, the parallax angle of stars was measured in 1838, okay? So, but one thing uh, you realize is that the greater the distance, the smaller the parallax angle, right? Because as I make the parallax angle smaller, I'm dividing one by smaller and smaller number, and therefore the distance is increasing. If P is 0.1, then 1 over 0.1 is 10, right? If P is 0.01, smaller, then 1 over 0.01 is 100. So the bigger the distance, the smaller the parallax angle, and vice versa. So let me show you that graphically, as illustrated here. Say we have a star uh, with parallax angle of 1 arc second. Then 1 over 1 is 1. So the distance to this star, number one, is one parsec, one PC. For a star that is seen at the parallax angle half of this value, uh, one half of arc second, one over one half is two, right? So the distance of star number two would be two parsecs. For this one here, the parallax angle is one third of the arc second. One over one third is three, so this one here is at the distance of three parsecs. So you see, there's, as the distance to the star increases, the parallax angle gets smaller, and they are just uh, inversely proportional to each other. Now, what actually a distance of one uh, parsec, what does it actually mean? Uh, for the closest star, Alpha Centauri, the parallax angle is 0.76 seconds of arc. And of course, for more distant stars, a parallax then gets smaller than this value. But this is the largest parallax angle for the actual stars that we can see, observe, right? All the other stars, because they're more distant, uh, they will uh, uh, be observed at smaller parallax angle. So the connection is that basically to familiar unit, which we use so far to express the distances between the stars that is light year, is that one parsec corresponds to 3.26 light years. And we can approximate this, it's good enough, say 3.3 light years. So then if somebody, if you read somewhere that uh, there, there is a star at 10, at the distance of 10 parsecs, then the same distance expressed in light years, I would just have to multiply this relation here 
uh, by 10, and then 10 parsecs uh, would translate into 32.6 light years. Right? 100 parsecs is 326 light years. So basically, there are two things you need to know. You need to know how the distance to the star in parsecs is related to its parallax angle, or vice versa. The distance in parsecs is 1 over the parallax angle expressed in seconds of arc, or vice versa, the parallax angle is uh, in seconds of arc is 1 over the distance in parsecs. That's piece of information number one that you need to know. And the second one is this connection between parsec and light year, that uh, one parsec is uh, 3.26 uh, light years.